Our next speaker is our own Dutchman who has recently completed 365 consecutive daily live streams on, on Periscope, on Facebook. His hashtag is Daily Dose of Dutch. Sounds nice. Today he's going to share the key lessons he learned completing this uh, amazing feat and how it can help you with your speaking business. Whether you love or loathe streaming, this talk will give you clear insights on consistency, perseverance, social media, and streaming live. Let's go mad on Speaker's Corner. If you're watching at home, go mad in your own office. In the room, go mad for Hugo Hyde! Thank you. So who here has ever considered, considered going live on Facebook? Few people. Who has actually tried it? I tried my first one. Tried? Way! Well done. Keep going. So normally I'm speaking on uh, leadership and normally I'm not using any slides. So today, um, for the PSA London, I thought, yes, let's, sorry Stephen, let's put in some PowerPoint slides <laughs> and bore you to death with PowerPoint. Because a while back I did a presentation at the Academy for Chief Executives. People familiar with ACE, or you're not allowed to say ACE, so the Academy for Chief Executives. Mm -hmm. And the feedback that I got was, you go, you have just presented us a fruit salad and we just have to pick and choose what is what we like in it. So actually that is also what I'm going to do this morning. So what I want to present to you is like a smorgasbord. So a proper Swedish word in the English language. A smorgasbord, which is a nice buffet. You go there and you either like it or you don't like it. Um, if you don't like meat, you don't take meat. If you don't like live streaming, don't do it. <laughs> Stay away from it. Um, but what I want to present to you is this buffet. And you can pick and choose what you like about it. And you can apply it in your business. So I want to share with you what it has done for me and that might either convince you or it might even convince you not uh, to do it. And I'm a business coach as well, so I thought for today, let me share with you the seven C's of consecutive live streaming. Because <laughs> we love all these sevens and fives and fours and uh, what well, needs to be an odd number because that the brain uh, believes in odd numbers. So the seven C's. So first, the challenge, how I got to it, the commercial reality of doing the live streams. Consistency is king. Content creation, because we are speakers. It is about creating content. Continuous improvement. And then I ran out of C's, so it is C equipment. <laughs> <laughs> and so what now? <laughs> the things you get away with as a foreigner is unbelievable. <laughs> so, so first the challenge, because I got challenged about a year ago. Um, I was here at a meeting at the PSA, and maybe you, you were here as well. Michel Poulard, French speaker, he was wrapping himself in a, a plastic bag, um, a very powerful talk, and he had his friend with him, Guy, and they were streaming all the time. I think every other session they were just on Periscope, because Facebook, Facebook Live didn't exist a year ago. You might think it has been around for ages, but it wasn't around a year ago. So they were streaming and uh, Michel was walking around and we were talking about live streaming and he says, Hugo, you've got so much material. Why don't you do a live stream every day? He said, it's a bit hard at day 50, but yeah, you got enough material. And I thought, well, let's park that one for a while. <laughs> But maybe you remember my showcase, sometimes people ask us to do stuff and then we ask, why? Why me? Why now? Why should I do that? But actually we should reverse that question to why not? Why not? And I remember I was listening either to a podcast or I saw a video of a motivational video and it was about taking the opportunity. And I was thinking about it and I thought back about that challenge that Michel Pola set me. To do 365 consecutive daily live streams. So on the 21st of May 2016 I did day one on Periscope. 
and I will show you later the difference what um, well in the year that it has brought me so that was the challenge I took the challenge and you might have taken challenges to raise money for charity to do a marathon and um, to lose weight to eat healthy so often we ask the question why to do a presentation to speak at the bigger audience that you've never spoken before so ask yourself that question well why not why not why not go and do it so i took the challenge and i did it now i'm a business coach as well so i'm a business coach and i speak on leadership and as a business coach i will always say to my client it's about the bottom line <coughs> you probably heard about uh, revenue is um, is uh, vanity um, ultimately cash is king that's the bottom line so as a business coach I believe in the commercial reality and when I speak on leadership when I speak on staff engagement so often people say yeah well that's all the fluffy stuff that's all the hairy fairy stuff well I know from experience that staff engagement and leadership brings money to the bottom line and what I want to share with you today is also the commercial reality of live streaming because whether you love or loathe live streaming it instantly brought me 17,400 pounds in the past 365 days of business so who would like to grow his business with 17 and a half grand yeah. Yeah. so that is what I can directly relate to live streaming and clients that I got as a result of it now there's also this big discussion about social media social media is for people that are hanging out they're just keeping each other entertained they're keeping each other busy now if I because I do an analysis of where I get my clients from referrals networking and um, just word of mouth um, and if I just look back in the last three years social media has given me 37 and a half grand of business so being on LinkedIn being on the platforms where my clients are now obviously it is for you to decide where are my clients because if you talk to a marketeer and they say well we need to roll you out along all platforms then well maybe you need to start looking for another marketeer because the key question is where where is your customer because if your customer is hanging out on LinkedIn then maybe Periscope or Instagram is not the right platform for you to be on the benefit of Facebook is actually that well um, how many people are on Facebook nowadays so you can target your audience so chances are that your client or your potential customer is actually on Facebook as well but also be clear about your service and be clear where is my potential customer hanging out because then you can target them so that is the commercial reality so again when you love or loathe live streaming and i believe even on speakers corner there has been a massive discussion and i'm just addressing speakers corner over there there has been this massive discussion about um clogging people's timelines with live streams and stuff like that and i had people upset about my live stream um unfortunately it was well it doesn't really matter it was my wife it was my mother-in-law <laughs> which is absolutely fine they're not my target so if you don't like my live stream then just unfriend me or don't watch but the thing is that the moment you get feedback from potential customers or when you even generate business through it that can be the signal for you to keep going because that is the key thing with doing live streams not everybody likes it not everybody likes you not everybody likes your accent which is absolutely fine then don't watch don't listen so that is the commercial reality now obviously consistency is key because you might be thinking yeah well i've started with this and i did it for three days and then I ran out of content. Well, keep thinking again, because I'm sure you have much more content than three days. Or, um, well, you did it for seven days. Maybe you took on a seven day challenge. And then after that, you thought, well, now what? So consistency, 
whether it's at a high level or at a low level, that is what people are looking for. Because consistency shows reliability. And it doesn't always have to be very good, because Ryanair is very consistent. But they're consistent at a low level, but they have become the biggest European airline by being consistent. We didn't pay anything, we didn't expect anything, and we didn't get anything. <laughs> but we were all flying with Ryanair. And they've become the biggest airline. So they've been extremely consistent. And the thing is also, if you do, I did the 365 live streams, and of course I had days that I didn't feel like doing it. <laughs> but you have uh, joined women slim fit, um, we, were heard, we heard about exercising and stuff like that. If you want to run a marathon, is it always easy to get up and go running? Is it always easy to do stuff? Whether you are a speaker or whether you are part of another group, it's not always easy. But a while back, a couple of months ago, I saw Dr. Steve, Professor Dr. Steve Peters speaking. Have you heard about Dr. Yeah, Steve yeah. Peters? Uh, Peters? He's a psychiatrist, and he's very clear that he is a psychiatrist. Some people think he's a sports psychiatrist, but he will disagree with that instantly. Because he's been, well, he has worked with British Cycling, he has worked with Sky, he's working with Ronnie O'Sullivan, the snooker player, but he didn't even recognize them when they were introduced to him, because he can't really be bothered about sports. <laughs> but the thing about Dr. Steve <coughs> Peters is that he, is, he knows the brain. And he wrote a book called The Chimp Paradox. Anybody read The Chimp Paradox? Yeah. If you're sometimes struggling or if you have the habit of interrupting, <laughs> then it's time to control your chimp because our chimp just responds much quicker than our uh, logic brain. So the chimp is just in there straight away. Now, what he also suggests is you might wanna kill the chimp, but unfortunately you can't. You can't simply shoot the chimp in your head. You have to cage it, you have to control it. But one of the key things that Steve Peters said was motivation follows commitment. Motivation follows commitment. Now, I see you thinking, so probably when you thought about your practicing for the marathon, when you're committed to run a marathon for charity, and you think about the charity, if you're running through London in the middle of the night, for breast cancer, and you think about the people that have been affected by it, how easy is it to motivate yourself? It's much easier, why? Because you're committed. You're committed to the cause. And that is, for me, the reason why I could complete 365 consecutive live streams. Why? Because I was committed to it. So if you're down on motivation, if you're wondering why am I doing this, and it doesn't matter if it's live streaming or maybe you do a 30 day block challenge or whatever. If you're down on motivation, check your commitment. Because once you're able to tap into that commitment, your motivation will follow. And that is where the consistency comes in. Now, we are speakers and they're always talking about content. We need to create uh, content which is the next slide, I think. Well, I probably moved it around. So, <laughs> continuous improvement. Now, when you look at continuous improvement, it is about getting better. And my first live stream, and I'm going to show you the example, my first live stream was not as good as my 50th, or my 100th, or my 365th. But that's the same with speaking. The first time you're standing in front of an audience, you want the ground to open up and swallow you. But then you do it one time, five times, 10 times. Some people maybe here have done it a hundred times. Sometimes you still want the ground to open up and swallow you, but it's much easier because you can tap back on the experiences that you've had. And that is also why we need to improve ourselves continuously. I think somebody just posted on Speaker Corner the question, um, perfection is death. And you've probably heard about this, practice makes perfect. Well, I think practice makes better. And the more you practice, the better you get. 
So what can you do? Well, first of all, if you want your speaking business to be better, you need to get better. You might have heard about, I'm, I'm paraphrasing <coughs> the quote from Jim Rohn. If you want your circumstances to change, you need to change. If you want your life to get better, you need to get better. And it's the same with our speaking business. If you want to improve your speaking business, you are the performer in that speaking business. So you need to get better. But it's the same with your live streams. If you want your live streams to be better, you need to be better. If you want your videos to get better, you need to be better. So we need to develop ourselves continuously. And what can we do? We can read books. Um, I just gave a few handouts because um, I didn't have enough uh, because I jammed our printer in the office yesterday. Okay. And I just thought to, um, well, to give you a sheet. And this sheet, I have it in PDF, so it will be uploaded on Speaker's Corner or drop me an email and I'm happy to share it with you. I put three books on there. And the first book is Known by Mark Schaefer. Um, I've just completed, finished it, uh, listening to it. It is a very current book because it was published this year. Uh, Mark Schaefer talks about becoming known. Because as speakers, that is what it is about. It is about you becoming known. And I think it's very encouraging when he talks about getting out there. He said, just start, take that action. Start doing it. Another book um, is, it's not who you know, it's who knows you, David Avery. Um, it has been out for a couple of years. Uh, great book that will just help you to become known in the, in the public domain. And a third book, and I haven't put it on there because John was actually speaking today, but it is a book that I genuinely believe will help you because it's a very practical book. It, it is a book that will help you also determine what is the value you can bring to the marketplace? What is it that you are good at? Because ultimately, it's the value that you bring to your audience that will make them book you. So, some books, videos. The content that is available on YouTube is phenomenal. It's 2017. A while back, one of my daughters asked, she said, when you had a question when you were at school, um, where were, you go where were you going actually? Were you, because it was the Google. Uh, no, there wasn't Google actually, there wasn't even a computer. You had to go to the library to get your stuff. Now, the material that is available is amazing, but you need to watch it. You need to do something with it. And just sharing the links on your Facebook page or whatever without watching them is not going to help you. It might help a lot of other people, but it's not going to help you. So watch the videos. Podcasts. Who here listens regularly to podcasts? Maybe you're not uh, traveling, maybe you're not an auditory learner, but nowadays there is so much value available uh, also in podcasts. And I've shared two. One of them is Michael Stelzner, Social Media Marketing. Um, there are podcasts of an hour. Uh, I put the link on there. And Michael Stelzner actually looks at the different social media platforms that there are. Because I wasn't a marketing specialist when I generated that business. I've just learned it by myself. I was a senior um, leader, in a uh, senior executive in the shipping industry. Um, I, nobody taught me about marketing. I just had to discover it myself. But that you do that by listening to podcasts. And Michael Stelzner, if you consider, if your audience is on Snapchat, for instance, and you can't get your head around Snapchat, then just go to that specific episode of Michael Stelzner, because then he's interviewing somebody who knows the nuts and bolts of Snapchat. And then you can decide for yourself if it is going to help you or not. Another one is the credibility coach, David Sargent. And David used to be our in-house marketeer um, at Fluid Business Coaching. And last year he started for himself um, and he helps coaches and speakers uh, to get known. And he just started with the podcast. I think yesterday he launched the fifth episode. But because I have learned so much from David in the past three years about social media, and he wants to share that with the world, I know that he will give you value. So check him out 
on uh, well on the various platforms that there are. And if you have an Apple phone, because sometimes people wonder where do I find that podcast? Um, if you have an Apple phone, you just get an app with podcasts, and you can just subscribe. You can search for the different podcasts. If you are uh, an Android fan, uh, which is fine, it's okay. <laughs> you don't have to apologize. If you are an Android fan, um, SoundCloud is uh, where you can find most often the same podcast that you can find on, uh, on the Apple app. So those two podcasts I highly recommend. There's one other, because who here in their speaking journey or in their business journey sometimes feel down? and you're not really sure what you're doing and where you're going and you need a little bit of encouragement. Well, it's not for the faint-hearted, that's why I didn't put it on here. It's the MFCEO. And yes, it stands for the MFCEO. It's on Andy Frisella. Uh, it's an American. Uh, Kayla's laughing um, because I, uh, well, I think I, uh, we listened to an episode once in the car. Yeah. And do you agree? It's not for the faint-hearted. It's not, it's explicit. Let me put it like that. But that's what we sometimes need to hear. I'm a coach and I have a coach. Why? Because sometimes I need somebody to hold the mirror in front of my face and say, okay, Hugo, it isn't working. Look, who is responsible for that? Because it isn't the market, it isn't the speaker agencies, it isn't the speaker bookers. If you are not being booked, it's because of you. So if you want that to change, you need to change. And, so, and the only way to do that is look in the mirror. And Andy Frisella will definitely uh, put that mirror in front of you. So that's the MF CEO. Get a coach or a mentor and also the PSA. Um, and not because I'm standing here uh, at the PSA in London, there's other regional meetings as well. I went to PSA bootcamp uh, a couple of years ago. Very, very useful, especially if you're a starting speaker and you just want to get your head around certain things, how to build your speech, where to start, just sign up to speaker bootcamp. Good investment of your 300 odd quid. Um, it's just completely in the other side of the country from where I am. I thought I was, uh, was driving three hours to the west from East Anglia, and I thought I was nearly hitting the Irish Sea. <laughs> um, but then I realized that somebody else drove three hours from the other side, so this country is actually bigger than I thought. Uh, <laughs> in, yeah, bigger than Holland. So uh, we'll see how big you will remain in Europe. Oh, let's, uh, oh, 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 sorry, sorry. Oh, that's another lesson. When you go live, you are live. And again, that is something you need to find for yourself if you're comfortable with that. Because I'm also recording this on a video, and maybe you have been trying to record videos for yourself, but you can do it over and over and over and over again. And you want to perfect it. But have you also discovered that you never, you never are? Because the fifth time you're recording the same video, it's never going to be perfect. Now the good thing with going live is you see three, two, one, and you're live. So there is no going back. So obviously you need to be careful which political statements you make on the stage. <laughs> now, I just thought to uh, show you the two differences about continuous improvement. So the left video is number 11. So that's day 11. And the right one is day 362. So clearly you can already see a difference in quality. The left one was on Periscope and the right one was on Facebook Live. But I want to say that has nothing to do with the quality. The quality is of course about the equipment. So I started with an iPhone 4S. That is the left quality. And the right quality is an iPhone 6S. So Andrew, can you show a little bit from the first one? Yeah. yeah, so here we are, day 11 already, so um, yeah, taking on this challenge uh, from uh, Michel Poulard. Enough, enough, enough. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, cool so let's try 362 then. 
Hello and welcome to day 362 of Daily Dose of Dutch. Today it's Friday and I normally talk about Friday review. And you might be wondering why is he always going on about his review? What is so important about it? So that's what I want to explain to you today. Because so often we're doing things... So clearly you can hear a difference in sounds, you can, clear, you can hear a difference in, uh, in the visuals. But again, you don't get that from day one. If you've ever played an instrument, you don't play back or Mozart um, after day one or day 11. You need to get the practice in and it's getting better and better and better. And I don't even think that I have perfected it. Uh, there is still so much to learn for me about live streaming and about recording videos. So content creation, find a way that suits you. So if you love writing, then go and write, but go and write, do it. If you rather speak, then record. <coughs> I prepared speeches simply by driving in my car because that's where I was inspired. So I just recorded the speeches while I was driving and then I asked Lindsay in the office to uh, transcribe them. If that works for you, that works for you. But here is the thing. So I did two to 10 minutes per day which has given me 29 <coughs> hours of content. So nearly 30 hours of content that I've created by doing two to 10 minutes a day. Now, of course, the welcome, hello, and welcome to Daily Dose of Dutch, all of that, let's cut that out. So let's say I have half of that is valuable content. That's 15 hours. Well, the average audio book is five hours. So that's three books of content that I have created by just live streaming. Did it make an impact on my day? Of course. Did it make an impact on my holiday? Yes, because um, like I said, the family wasn't always the biggest fan of uh, my live streams, which again is fine. I'm sure they're not watching anyway. So, And also I got that question and I want to take some questions later on as well. Um, but people have asked me, do you ever run out of content? No, I don't think so. Why? Because we are living life every day. Yesterday, just look at the election. I'm a leadership speaker. Do you think there is enough to share about leadership? <coughs> yes. I'm uh, working with my clients on sales and customer service. Well, this summer wasn't a very good summer for Eurotunnel. So during my summer holiday, what I could share was customer service lessons that I've learned from Eurotunnel, because sometimes we learn how not to do it. So very easy. And interestingly enough, I was doing three consecutive days on Eurotunnel, hashtagging him then, of course, as well. So it was showing up in their feed. People were interacting with that. So I got a phone call from Eurotunnel. Uh, Mr. Hay, um, we see that uh, you're quite active on social media about us. They obviously didn't book me as a speaker because they didn't want to get better. They just wanted to shut me down, which uh, didn't work, of course. But we had good days with Eurotunnel as well, so I've given them credit on those days as well. Let me put that straight too. <laughs> so just look at your day, the conversations that you have with your clients, when you go to a networking event, when you are speaking somewhere, I'm sure that you got a couple of minutes of valuable content that your audience wants to hear. Because ultimately it is about your audience. When we're speaking, it is not about us. It's about what value does your uh, readership, your listenership, what do they get from it? Now, over the past 365 days, I had nearly 56,000 views of my daily life. Not every day, not yet, I'm working on that. Uh, but on every day, on average, between 100 and 200 viewers, people that were watching the videos. And again, you're not pleasing everybody. But the number of emails that I've got back and the comments that I've had over the year of people that were just encouraged by that, by that message or they just needed something to uh, that day that helped them in their business, um, that drove me on to carry on doing it. Because sometimes you can make a difference in just one person's life, which for me makes it worthwhile. 
So that's the content creation that it has done. Now, the equipment. So, what do you use for that? I put down a couple of things on the, on the sheet, the camera. Nowadays, your uh, smartphone camera is fantastic quality. So if you have an iPhone or a Samsung 6 or 7, the quality of these cameras is fantastic. So yes, you can invest in a, in a big SLR camera if you want to do that. Um, I've also, I'm also using this camera. It's a little, it's called a Canon Ligria Mini X. You can even twist it like this. So you can see the audience, you can see yourself. A lot of YouTubers are using it. So recommend that camera as well. And then if you look at the microphone, because also the microphones nowadays on your phones are pretty good. If you want to invest in a little bit better mic, then make sure you get a smartphone lav mic or a smartphone mic. And the difference is that if you look at the plug of the mic, it has three uh, different uh, bands around it. So a normal mic will always have two because it's stereo, but when you have a smartphone mic, make sure you get the three. Initially, I had the Rode Smart Lav, which is 52 quid, uh, a very good mic, but I left it somewhere in a hotel. Um, so I lost that one, and I thought, let's replace it with uh, an eight pound one that you can find on Amazon, and it works as well. So again, sometimes try these things and see if it works, if it works for you. Get yourself a proper tripod. Again, the Elbot tripod, fantastic tripod, 30 quid on, uh, on Amazon, free delivered. So you can't really go wrong with these things. And I remember standing, sitting at your seat two years ago when Frank Furness was in London. He came around with all these little gadgets and showed what he was using. Well, go away and do it. And then just buy a few of these things and just get going. So that's the equipment that you can use. Now, what now? Because maybe you're sitting here thinking, do I really want to do this? Well, ask yourself a question, why not? Why not? And you don't have to do it 365 days, but try it for 30 days. Again, if live streaming or videos is not your thing, which is fine, you don't have to do it then write, write your blog, but you have to take action. Results come from action. Results don't come from dreaming and goal setting and strategy sessions and talking. They come from action. And once you have the result, you review that result. And that's why, well, like I said, I'm speaking on leadership yesterday with Theresa May leaders don't resign leaders review so they look back and they say so what worked and what didn't work if you have your social media strategy see for yourself what works what do i need to do more and what do i need to do less but whatever you are planning to do take action and it's not as scary as it seems and it's not as hard as it seems because I got feedback from people doing 365 live streams after day 50, 60, it becomes a habit. And to be honest, I'm missing it. So I'm probably going to start again. Sorry, family, uh, but I'm watching anyway. So if you wanna connect with me, if you have any questions, or if you have any doubts, or if you're wondering, well, where do I start? How do I go about this? Then connect with me. And I'm still surprised that so many speakers at the PSA are not active on social media. It is about being known. And I'm sure that your customer, your client, the people that are going to book you are somewhere on the, on the web. So try to find them. And um, I'm normally Twittering and Instagramming about the PSA London and I'm sometimes surprised that a month later when I've tagged somebody, it's being retweeted. And I think, really? So it has taken you four weeks actually to look at your Twitter feed. Um, and it's about giving back. I'm happy to tag you normally and if you are a regular PSA member, 
um, you know, I do that. Because it helps me also to get out there. And that just means that together we, we lift each other to a higher level. So feel free to connect with me. Fantastic, we have to leave you there, but what a, what a brilliant session from Hugo Hyde. <laughs>